let's modify some vanilla loot tables with global loot modifiers. Forging fabric courses with advanced topics such as entities, custom structures, and 3D armor models linked in the description below. Alright, friends, I'm back in the once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding some custom loot to already existing loot tables. So, this is basically modifying vanilla loot tables, and we're going to do this with the global loot modifiers. Now, this is a very long word for actually a fairly straightforward thing to really do. There are some interesting things. One class, which is a serializer class, which is a little more complicated. But overall, when you actually take a look at it, it is very similar across all three different things that we're going to implement. The first thing is we're going to spawn cucumber seeds from grass. We're going to make it so that the dousing rod is going to be found in igloo chests, so in in actual structure chests and then also coal coke is going to drop from a creeper those are our three additions that we're going to do so in our tutorial mod package right click a new package called the event package now we're going to need an event for this but first of all let's do the loot stuff so we're going to make a new package called loot and then we're going to create three different classes and the first class is going to be the coal coke from creeper edition modifier actually modifier not modifiers there you go and then we're gonna i'm actually gonna copy over the name here because that's gonna be a little bit easier and the next one is gonna be the cucumber seeds from grass edition modifier and then last but not least we're also gonna have the dousing rod in igloo edition modifier there you go so all three of those. Now I will copy over the contents of this. However, once you actually see them, they're very, very straightforward. So you can see this is the coal coke from Reaper Edition modifier. And then when you actually take a look at the other two, you can see that they look, I mean, pretty much exactly the same thing. It is very, very similar as you can see. There you go. That's the last one. So there really isn't that much to it. The only really interesting thing here is the do apply method. You can, of course, change some of those serialized methods, right? The read and the write method here and add some more properties, some more JSON properties to it. That is, of course, totally up to you. However, in our case, we're just going to keep it like this because this is just going to add one particular item to the loot table. And the way that we do this is with this do apply method here. So this parameter right here, the generated loot, right? That is the loot that would be dropped if we didn't do anything. So if we just did this, right, if we just returned generated loot, exactly what would have, you know, dropped, drops. That's literally it. Now, what we can do, because this is a list, we can just add stuff to it. So, for example, our addition here that we're reading in from this read method right here, right, the addition, or the addition inside of the JSON file. We're going to make those JSON files in just a moment. This is just what we're going to add to this loot. That's all that there is to it. Now, now you also have available this loot context, which is incredibly amazing. You can see, you can get all sorts of stuff. You can get the luck, you can get a random here, you get can even get some, you know, visited conditions, dynamic drops. There's a lot of stuff in here that you can do. So really, you can build any type of loot table in here that you want. In our case, what we're just going to do is we're just going to add one simple item to the actual loot, as you can see. And then we're returning the loot. This also means that in theory, yes, you can clear all of the loot that would have been dropped and then only drop your loot. I highly recommend against this because this might impede your intermod compatibility. So for example, if creepers no longer drop gunpowder, but there's a mod that like heavily relies on creepers dropping gunpowder, then you pretty much make your mod and that mod completely incompatible. I highly recommend not removing stuff, only adding stuff. This is then you're pretty much always on the safe side. Now, this is going to add this with a 100% certainty. Now, for the dousing rod here, we actually have a 95% chance of adding this. I actually think this makes way more sense right here in the actual uh, cucumber from seeds. Right, so make this like something about, how about like 50% chance so that this basically gets added here. And then this one, you know, maybe maybe we're just going to make a 100% chance because let's not uh, try and like search for multiple igloos. They are sometimes hard to find one way or the other. But yeah, that's pretty much the idea here. So that you can see, you can also add some chances here. So this is also something that you can do. Highly recommend once again, like always, playing around with this a little bit. Take a look at some of other mods, maybe in, on GitHub, that add those as well. And then the question is, okay, what do we do with these classes? So in our event package, we're going to make a new Java class called Mod Event Bus Events. And this class is going to be very, very interesting because what it's going to have is at the top here, it's going to have a add mod. And then dot event bus subscriber. 
with a mod ID, tutorial mod dot mod ID, and then comma bus equals mod dot event bus subscriber dot bus dot mod. Mm, interesting. So what does that mean? Well, this basically means that, well, the general idea is if we, for example, think back to the mod world events right here, we had this event bus subscriber, but we didn't add this bus at the end here. And the idea is that if you don't add this, then it defaults to the forge bus, otherwise it uses the mod bus. Now, in very, very broad terms, the general idea is that some methods are called with the forge bus and some with the mod bus. That is really the extent that you need to know this at the moment. Anything else really does not need to be discussed here. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to copy over the method here, and you can see this is the registry event.register global loot modifier serializers. And if we actually middle mouse one click on this registry event, we should be able to see. You can see there you go. The registry event has the I mod bus event implemented right here the interface and basically those are all of the events that are all on the mod bus instead of the forge bus that's the general idea so keep that in mind usually it's not going to be that big of an issue but i just wanted to mention this as well now this pretty much just registers our three edition serializers as you can see once again of course everything here available in the description below get a repository and individual gist as well and now what we need to do is we need to add those JSON files. Now where do they belong? They belong in the data tutorial mod folder and then right click new directory called loot underscore modifiers. Now I'll be hopping over the three JSON files here. You can see the names of the JSON files have to match, of course, these names right here. So that's very important. And then that's also incredibly important. This is important for 118 is that you add this type right here, which it just has the same name as the actual file. And then just your mod ID. And you can see in under addition here, we're just specifying the actual item that we want to add. And then in the condition for the creeper, for example, we say loot table ID for entities slash creeper. Now, where is this? You know, where does this come from? Well, if we go down to the external libraries under exactly this one right here, so ex actually client extra 118 2 or whatever your version might be, under the data folder Minecraft loot tables, you can see entities, and then you can find the creeper right here of course they there it is right the creeper so in theory you can also do you know any block here any chest in theory would also work now the block we're actually do doing it in a little bit of a different way we're actually using the block state property here for the grass so this is just going to add it to the grass in this case and then the dowsing rod igloo once again uses the loot table idea of the chest here to add the dowsing rod that is pretty much what there is to it we need to add one more json file to the forge data folder actually so right click on the forge data folder and this is going to be also the loot modifiers and then this is going to be called the global underscore loot underscore modifiers and here we just need to basically reference those three files so our tutorial mod mod id and then the names of these three files and that is pretty much all with that we need to do here to add those additional drops to particular things like the entity like like the structure and like a block so that's pretty much all that we need to do so for completion's sake let's see if it works all right we found ourselves back in minecraft so let's see and first of all let's kill a creeper right here and there you go the cold coke has been dropped now let's actually i can let's let's add some bone meal actually that's going to be a little bit easier to see so we're just going to add some grass and then i'm going to go into survival mode and break it and then we're going to see there you go some cucumber seeds right here so actually working totally fine as you can see they're dropping that's really freaking cool and then we also have a igloo right next to us and if we go down into the basement right here what we're going to find in the chest is of course a dowsing rod so everything added and everything working exactly like you would expect it to really freaking cool and that's actually how easy it can be to add some custom loot to vanilla loot tables and that will already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah.